ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وحق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي ان شاء الله today i want to discuss hopefully a relevant topic with everyone and that topic will be about what it means to have a conditional approach to iman what it means to have conditional belief in allah and i also want to transition that into the topic of putting difficulty in perspective because these two things are related inshallah as you will see now starting off i just want to give a quick quick uh, story a few years back i visited uh, if anybody's familiar with pike peak in colorado so i pike peak is one of the highest peaks uh, in the united states highest mountains and driving up on pike's peak can be scary it can be scary because there are times where as you're going up the only thing you see because of the incline is the sky in front of you and on your right side or on your left side the only thing you see is the ground below and if you focus too much on what's happening around you and not focus enough on staying inside your lane there could be disaster and as i'm driving up my family's keep reminding me keep your eyes on the road keep your eyes on the road occasionally i'll glance off to the side and there are no railings or anything there so keep that in mind i bring this up why because for us as believers we must make sure that we're not at the edge of our faith we're not towing the line at the edge where it's easy for us to fall off given one mistake and to put this in, in, in context in surah hajj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa minan nas man ya'budu allah ala harf fa in asabahu khayrun ma'an bih wa in asabatuhu wa in asabatuhu fitnatun qalab ala wajhihi خسير خسير الدنيا والآخرة ذلك هو خسران المبين. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in translation, there are also some who serve Allah. There are some who serve Allah with unsteady faith, with unsteady belief, or they're on the edge and they're on the borderline. If something good comes their way, they are satisfied. But if they are tested, they revert to their old ways, losing both this world and the next, the akhirah. And that is the biggest loss, the clearest loss. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing to us people who serve Allah. So these are not people who are unaware that Allah exists. These are not people who have gone completely astray necessarily, but these are people who serve Allah, but their beliefs are on the edge. and they treat islam as a business transaction what does that mean in a business 
You try to seek what's good for you. You, st- you try to seek out what's profitable for you. And that those are the things that you go for. And you stay away from what will give you loss. And so they have conditional belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owes them. Or as if, it's as if, a'udhu billah, that they think that they can create a partnership, a business partnership with Allah, where there are harms and benefits, where there is benefit for us to follow His commandments. This is not the case. This is not the case. And think about it. If things are going well with your business, then you want to double down into it. You want to pour more money into it. You want to continue working with those same partners because you believe that you will, you believe that you will get a good return. Whereas for the one whose business is not doing well, he will want to cut off ties with his partner. He will want to look to other avenues of revenue because he understands that this is not working. There's something in it for him. And so, when they have this conditional belief in Allah, the thing is, in a business, when things go south, you look for other avenues. But for these people, similarly, for these people in times of success, when things are going okay in their lives, when they're content, when they're in a situation where they have, they're getting good grades, their friends and family, they're pleased with them. Maybe they just received a job offer from a, for an internship or for a full-time position. Maybe they're in a situation where everything is going well. So for them, they're okay and they will stay the course. They will think that it's okay and it's good to believe in Allah because He's giving me all of these things. But what happens when the tables are turned? What happens when they now face hardship and difficulty? What happens if they fail their exam? What happens because they need to take time off to do their salah, take time off to do these type of things, their grades are going down, tanking, because they need to leave class at a certain time. What happens if because of a stance that they take, their friends start to leave them, and their family is asking them, what's wrong with you? Why are you being quote unquote religious or why are you doing these type of things? In that moment, when things are not going your way, when you're stranded, when your car breaks down, when you're injured or when you're sick, it's at that time, it's at that time that these types of people that Allah is describing, they feel that they're experiencing loss because of their belief in Allah. And thinking back to the analogy that I brought up in the beginning with the mountain, it's as if they're teetering at the edge of the road and any wrong turn, any distraction could be the end for them. And how can we think, thinking back to the story of Iblis, where Iblis says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah asks him to bow down, do sajda to Adam alayhi salam, along with the angels, and he responds, why should I bow down to someone you have created out of clay? And in another surah, he says, I am made out of fire and he is made out of clay. And he thinks that he is better than Adam alayhi salam. Rather, he thinks that his knowledge is greater than Allah's a'udhu billah. And he challenges and tests Allah. And that's the peak of arrogance. And that's where that believer can end up that Allah describes who keeps his belief on the edge. And this path leads to incorrect mindsets. It leads to seeking that which is pleasurable in this dunya. No matter what the harms will be for you in the akhirah, no matter what the cost. This mindset makes you want to do whatever you are happy with, without considerations of right and wrong to do what feels good, to be your own source of guidance, as Fir'aun would claim to be Rabb himself. And so submitting to a higher power, submitting to Allah, putting our head down, not only in salah, but putting our head down when it comes to submitting in all facets of life, is seen as a loss, not victory, not success. 
And this is the highest level of arrogance. May Allah protect us. And in turning away from the reminder of Allah, turning away from Allah, this type of person will ironically seek protections elsewhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us elsewhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Instead Allah, instead of Allah, they call upon something that can neither harm them or help them. They call upon things that also require help from other places. How can we put our trust in something that lives and dies? How can we put our trust in something that's not self-sufficient? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that instead of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person turns to that which they think they can get benefit out of. Whether that's submitting to their desires, or submitting to other people, or even submitting to idols. And in Surah Jathiyah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, have you seen the one who has taken a God out of his own desire? And Allah has sent him astray due to knowledge and has set a seal upon his heart and has put a veil, a cover over his vision. So who will guide him after Allah? Then will you not be reminded? So in reality, the reason I bring up this ayah is that there is no such thing as an atheist. Even though today we hear about the rise of atheism, in reality, there's no such thing. Why is that the case? Because even for those that deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they believe and devote themselves to something. And belief and worship is linked to obedience. And if they obey just their desires, and they believe that the societal pressures, for example, are above the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we know what's going on today. I don't need to go into the details. We know what's going on today when the symbols of Allah, the commands of Allah are put on the line and the pressure is placed upon the people. And instead of looking towards ending corruption, they look towards burning the symbols of Allah, abandoning the commands of Allah. That's the reality we're living in. May Allah protect us. And these are part of the traps of shaitan. So either we worship our nafs, we worship our desires, or we worship other people, be that celebrities, be that influential people that we look up to and we follow and we obey, or be that even idols, be that inanimate objects. Or the final conclusion is that if we worship none of those things and we reject these, everything, these matters of the dunya that take us down, it's that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The human being is such that he must submit to something. That's how Allah created us and gave us that instinct to look up to something. And if, you, if that something doesn't land on, uh, your, your worship and obedience doesn't land to Allah, you will worship something. So from that perspective, there are no atheists. And the worship to Allah, the sajda to Allah, both in action, both in physically and in our obedience, is the way that we liberate ourselves from the worship of anything else, from the worship of the dunya, from the chains that keep us down. When we chain ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's what keeps us away and liberates us from all these other oppressions. Because worship is linked to obedience. And in the end, when we're going back to what we talked about in Surah Hajj, disaster and calamity happens to every single one of us. And it can either take a person to complete trust in Allah when they realize nobody is there for them. Or it can take them away from Allah when they reject Allah completely. May Allah protect us. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم so when we're dealing with recovering from hardship or difficulty, we have to have the right approach. But this requires the right framework, the right thinking. And 
Nobody prepares for a disaster. Nobody's supposed to prepare for a disaster when that disaster happens. Whether that be a loss of life or a family or whatever it may be. Rather, you're supposed to prepare for disaster before it strikes. So you can respond properly. And those that deal with emergency situations, they go through drills and practices in order to get them acquainted with that, how to operate under stress and difficulty. So in a hadith, companion named uh, Suhaib uh, reported that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Strange are the ways of the believer, for there is good in every affair. And this is not the case with anybody else. Because for a believer, if he has an occasion where he feels happy, he thanks Allah, he says Alhamdulillah, but more than saying it with the tongue, he feels it in his heart. All thanks and praise are due to Allah. And in the situation where he gets into trouble and gets into difficulty, he has sabr, and then there is good in, in it for him. And he says Alhamdulillah, and he feels it with his heart. And in another hadith, narrated by Abu Hurairah, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, I am just as my slave thinks of me. In other words, I am able to do for him whatever he thinks I can do for him. And I am with him when he remembers me. If he remembers me in himself, I too remember him in myself. And if he remembers me in a group of people, I remember him in a group that's better than the one he's in. And if he comes a hand span nearer to me, I go nearer to him one cubit. And if he comes a cubit nearer to me, I go to him the distance of two outstretched arms near to, nearer to him. And if he comes to me walking, I go to him running. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that in difficulty, in calamity, when we reach out to Allah, and we go even a little bit towards Him, Allah comes even more than we can imagine back to us and helps us more than we can imagine. And that's the hope that the believer has. And that's a situation that's unique to the believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Baqarah, and we're all familiar with the ayah, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوءِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, We shall certainly, this is without a doubt, test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of property and lives and crops, meaning the, the nourishment and the things we have to eat around us. But, Prophet, give glad tidings to those uh, from amongst the sabirun, those who are steadfast. Because sabr for us is not patience. Sabr for us is not something passive, that we wait until it's over. Sabr for us, as it was in the case of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to persevere no matter the hardship. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through all of the hardships that you can imagine. Losing sons having his own family torture and oppress him, losing his wife, Khadija radiallahu anha, being exiled from his people, oppressed, having to go to war against his people. Think about all the calamities that he suffered, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah tests those that he loves. And nobody was tested more than the prophets. And from among the prophets, no one was tested more than our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember that. Remember that when you're going through that difficulty and that hardship. And I want to conclude with the final hadith. So Anas bin Malik narrates that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, for amongst the people of Jahannam, for those that led a life of ease and plenty amongst the people, Meaning they had a lot in this life. They had all the luxuries you can think of and imagine. And they would be made to dip into Jahannam for one moment. And they're taken out of Jahannam. And they are asked, Did you experience anything good in this life? Did you ever feel any pleasure in this life? And they will say, No, by Allah, 
uh, 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 they will the respond, we have never experienced any pleasure in this life. Whereas another person would come on the day of judgment or come in the uh, akhirah. And he would feel distress in this life and he would have a miserable life from the perspective of owning luxury and being in a position of comfort. And this would be a believer. And that believer for one moment would be dipped into Jannah. And he would be asked, have you ever felt any distress? Have you ever felt any hardship in your life? And, and he would respond, by Allah, no my Lord, I never faced any distress. I never faced any hardship in this life. One moment in Jannah is enough for you to forget. So, and, and finally, the ayat in Surah Hajj go on. We're running out of time, so I'll just conclude with this. The transition of the meaning of uh, uh, ayah 14. But Allah will admit those who believe and do righteous deeds. Gardens graced with flowing streams. Allah does whatever He wills. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring it back to the beginning, is talking to us about a situation where that, that person who claims to be of faith, when things are going easy, he says, I'm one of the Muslims. I'm with you guys. I believe in Allah. Everything's going well for me. But when he's in a position of distress and calamity, he lives on the edge where he can fall at any moment. And I ask Allah that He makes us of those who remain steadfast upon His deen in times of tribulation and in, in times of hardship. And I uh, ask Allah that He keep us steadfast and follow the footsteps of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in moments of hardship and difficulty. And I pray that Allah opens our eyes to the traps of shaitan in all forms that they come in. Be that uh, shirk, be that kufr, be that uh, secularism, be that whatever isms that we're dealing with today and ideologies today that are other than from Allah. May Allah help us. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'maru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'a idil kurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi yaidukum la lakum tadakkaroon udhkurullah yadkurkum wa shkuru yazidkum wa astaghfiru yaj'al lakum min amrikum bakhraja wa aqimis sala